Hey everybody, Nick here, and they say you should do one thing every day that scares you. Well, um, I think this has me covered for the month. Today, we are going to disassemble and maintain this little guy right here. This is the Shirogorov Knives Quantum. Uh, this was uh, handed to me by a, a local buddy uh, who is uh, getting ready to sell this guy, and... Uh, <laughs> Boy, uh, as you can see, this has been his daily driver user knife. Um, there is a lot of box residue and such on that, and so I know that this is going to absolutely need the help. But I also know that it's going to be not straightforward, Star partly because of stupid screws. These aren't so terrible in the grand scheme of stupid screws, but they're they're still pretty stupid. Um, and because the internals here, I just don't know what we have waiting for us. Uh, although I know it's going to be dirty. So let's go on ahead and jump into it. And uh, this is not going to be a full review. These knives are very hard to get anyways, so I'm not going to bother with that. But what I am absolutely going to do is give you some first impressions and try and take this guy apart. So, okay, I'm going to start off and I'm using this little spudger tool here. And my dream, this is a free spinning pivot. That is dumb, by the way. This should not be free spinning, especially on an $1,100 knife. But um, my dream is that I can get in here and remove the pivot, and I'm just applying some force on the backside with my finger here, and that that will allow... Yeah, and it's working. Great. So there is no way I can scratch this knife with a piece of plastic, right? And so by being able to do this, um, that that was that's nice. That's a definite improvement to how I thought this was going to go. On the back end here, I might be able to do the same thing... No, I'm not. So what I'm going to go on ahead and do instead is I'm going to find a flathead bit that will fit exactly this. And I just don't know what size that's going to be. Yeah, that'll work. All right, so I'm going to put that in this big old iFixit driver. This is all coming out of a big old iFixit kit. And then very carefully, there we go. Pop that loose. Okay, well, the screws weren't the hard part. That's good. <laughs> Hopefully, this is going to go really well. Hopefully, this will be easy. I am not a betting man, mind you, but hopefully it will. So now I can remove this the rest of the way. Luckily, there are only two screws. Oop, uh, there's one of them. And let's pop out the pivot here. So one thing that's very important to note is that I'm using right now a... Uh, this mat here has not only a bunch of little hexagons, which are, of course, the best of gons, but uh, I, I am, uh, it is able to uh, capture any, any loose bearings that may roll out. At least that's the dream. If I throw them or something along those lines, uh, I will have problems, but my goal is to keep them largely under control. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and take this guy apart, and I'm going to try and do so by lifting this scale off because this screw is removed. And by the way, everything was scented. Everything was running nicely. Okay, that's actually not as bad as I had worried, right? We do have ourselves a multi-row bearing system here, but uh, there are not nearly as many bearings. Uh, well, at least they're not as small as I'd worried they were. Although, oh my God, this knife is disgusting. Um, good Lord, man, what are you doing with your life? Actually, you're using your knife. I should support that. But we're going to be able to do some very, very real good here. Um, and this is what happens, of course, when you daily drive a knife. And he really, truly does. This is a good buddy of mine here locally. And I can attest that this has been in his pocket pretty much every day for... Uh, six months or so you know maybe he swapped it up some but by and large um yeah so actually before i go any further before i touch any of the bearings etc i'm just going to clean this blade up um there's no necessary order for operations here but i'm going to just go ahead and handle it this way if you're curious about any of the tools i'm using although this is a q-tip with rubbing alcohol so that's not so exotic uh go ahead and check out nickshabazz.com slash tools where I describe every single tool that I use in this process. But my goal here is just to get this cleaned up entirely. Get in here, clean out this. But yeah, um, that's all I'm trying to do here is to get everything clean nice and nice and well up. So the knife itself is actually it's interesting. It's got a, a very nice detent to it. It's uh, very well machined. I mean, lots of internal milling. 
things like that. There's a lot to like about it. It is also 1100 bucks, which is where they kind of lose me, right? Unfortunately, you know, the reason you don't see a lot of Shirogorov on my channel is just because the pricing is kind of out of control, especially for their, their relatively basic production versions like this. Um, this knife with Rayot on the packaging would sound very different in terms of price. And, you know, I just don't tend to find that outside of the really high-end custom division stuff, which is amazing, I want to be clear, I just don't tend to find that their pricing is, uh, well, frankly, reasonable. Um, they're kind of the only game in town, and if you like those particular styles, then you the only game in town for Shiro, of course. Um, and if you like those particular styles, then they're, uh, they're, they're great. Actually, let me use one of these little guys to get up into the detent hole. One of those little tiny tools that is not so commonly needed, but occasionally useful. Little swabby dude. These are marketed by Knife Pivot Lube, but you can find them in a bunch of places. But yeah, that'll let me get up in there. And now we've removed the tape residue, which generally falls to uh, isopropyl alcohol, etc. And uh, the blade is in much, much better shape. So I'm going to take this blade here and I'm going to put it over there because I really don't want to deal with it right now. Okay, so the next step, um, the, the next part of this process here, I'm going to clean things off get things out of the way, um, is I'm going to start dealing with the bearings. Since right now all of these bearings are under control, right now everything's in position, I'm just going to go on ahead and I'm going to put this whole thing right up there. Um, that way I don't have to worry about it, I don't have to deal with it, it's just sort of on its own. And then what I'm going to go on ahead and do is start this side. So we've got ourselves a pivot here, and I'll go ahead and clean things as I pull them off the knife. That way I can minimize the amount of time with bearings loose, right? Because my biggest worry here is just I don't want to lose any bearings. Um, I just as soon not. It's not the end of the world if I do. You know, these are replaceable bearings. We can find others of the button. And frankly, it would run fine without them, but, uh, well, without one or two of them, without any of them would be a major problem. But yeah, um, you know, I, I just, I would as soon avoid that. Okay, let's take that little piece of hardware out. Clean this little bit off here. But yeah, so it's a very, very interesting knife. Value-wise, uh, no, but uh, at the same time, uh, it's it's unquestionably well-made, right? There's a, there's a lot of joy in it. Um, and so, yeah, that's why you're not seeing a full review, just this. And frankly, the reason I'm doing this is because, A, he's a friend, and I'm happy to help him clean up his stuff, and B, these disassembly videos can often be, at least for me, uh, fun. And in this case, because it's freaking disgusting, I know I'm doing some good for the world, right? It's like a charity thing for this poor knife, right? Like those, the, 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 the sad videos with the puppies at the animal shelters, right? It's it's like that, except with the Shirogorov. All right, um, so uh, let's go ahead and clean off this stop pin, which has untold horrors on it. All right, beautiful. <laughs> uh, so, um, go ahead, get that good to go. My next step here, I have avoided this enough. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to transfer all of these bearings into this little sub-container here. And I'm keeping only one side. I'm working on one side at a time here because I really just don't want to, uh, I just don't want to have to deal with, oh, how many bearings belong to which side? I mean, I can find that out because there are only so many holes, but, um, okay. There's some kind of a lubrication in there still. So my goal is to lift this out, but I really, oh, there we go. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. So now what I want to do is check to make sure I have one, two holes missing, one, two bearing. Okay. This part is clean. Well, no, it's not. It's in fact, it's completely freaking disgusting. But it's uh, it is clean of bearings. All the bearings are over here. So now what I'm going to do is get in here and oh, that part fell out, so I'll handle that as well. But now I can get in here and give this a good little scrubbing. This is a time where I kind of wish I had a an ultrasonic cleaner. One of these days, I'm just going to buy one. Not necessarily for the channel because it's. I guess I could keep it on the desk or something, but. Maybe better off in a garage or something. But nonetheless, um, so I could just kind of get in there and get everything ultrasonic out first and then come in for detail work. 
but just kind of cleaning everything up here. A little bit of more gunk there. All right. Beautiful, and I feel like I can do a little bit better here, but I'm not sure how. Let me grab a fresh swatch of fabric. Not swatch as in moon swatch. It's a slightly different thing. Still want to have one of those. Not 100% sure I care that much either. <laughs> All right. Um, let's go ahead and I'll swap out my Q-tip here and just go through here one more time and through here. Okay, beautiful. Now I will clean this part off. The inside of this knife, at least that side of it, is now much cleaner, which is good. I will take that. All right. Now I have decisions to make. I have everything... Why is that so? Is that just more gunction? I guess. Gunction, of course, is short for gunky action. For those of you who are curious, playing along at home. I don't claim that that's English, but I do claim that I say it, so I guess that works. All right. And I think we're pretty much good to go on that side. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'll put that back here. I'm going to keep this side sort of out of out of the realm. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this side and I'm going to do the same thing. Because I'm going to actually want to rebuild it from that other side there. But my goal here is to transfer all of the balls over here into this little hole here. And I'm going to do that by trying the same affair I did last time where I pick this race up. With these tweezers, maybe? Holy crap, it's working. Hey, I did it. Ha! All right, uh, don't get cocky, kid. Uh, there's still plenty that can go wrong from here, but at the same time, that was nice. So, okay. What I'm doing here is just the same thing as before. Cleaning this off, degunculating. Nothing else, I'm saving him shipping costs so he doesn't have to ship all this across the country. Oof. Uh, all right. Uh, so let's go on ahead, clean this out here. Yeesh. Uh, and again. There we go. Clean that off there. Probably clean that bit in there as well. External is fine. That's... Okay, what am I missing here? I'll go ahead and throw that open and then grab a new one. That's a pleasant sound. Sorry about that. All right, beautiful. So that is degunculated as well. Is that? All right, beautiful. Okay, so here's where we enter the danger zone. Okay. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm applying some uh, rubbing alcohol here. I'm just going to take this whole bearing race, this whole thing, and I'm just going to start rubbing, right? My goal here is just to give these bearings a nice cleaning. I'm going to flip this over. The reason we are entering the danger zone is that as we remove the gunk from these bearings, they are going to want to come loose because I suspect the thing that was holding them into this container at all was actually the oil, right? And so in order to clean this off, I'm, I'm going to need to just remove these bearings. And so what I'm going to do is just kind of use my little, this is a watch spring bar tool, and I'm just going to pop these guys out. I could actually probably get away with just doing what I've done there and letting the bearings just kind of be cleaned within the bearing race itself. And that's fine, but I kind of want to do this right, you know? It's an expensive knife. It's a nice knife. Um, and I want to, you know, make sure everything is as clean as I can get it. So my goal here is going to be to take these guys, and rather than trying to pick this up, what I'm going to do is just take some more rubbing alcohol 
and just kind of do this. The goal here is just to roll these between these two sheets with, yeah, let me kind of condense things a little bit. And hopefully this will remove any remaining gunction from them. Those look like pretty clean bearings, and I'll go ahead and I'll clean the bearing race separately. All right. And clean the outsides of it. And the inside of it as well while I'm at it. Although that's kind of... Yeah. All right. So, next step is going to be the rebuilding process. I know what you're thinking. Nick, you haven't cleaned these bearings yet. No, I haven't. But I don't want to until it's time, uh, until I'm ready to install them, because I would much rather put them all back together in the knife itself. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take this guy, and I'm going to start off and I'm gonna do this. I need to not put Loctite on this knife, because Shirogorov cannot afford to put a non-free spinning pivot, like to mill something in there at $1,500 for some ungodly reason. I am, uh, we are not able to uh, lock tight the pivot here. It's not amazing, but it's the reality you pay uh, for that. So, okay, next thing I'm going to want to do is just drop this into position here. I'm going to put into place this stop pin that will partly, so there's a stop pin that's necessary, but also because I very much, oh, sorry, my camera fell down. <laughs> And actually, I'll go ahead and I'll zoom in a little bit for you. Come on now. That way, hopefully, you can see what I'm doing. Here's what I'm going to do. I am going to take some nano oil here. This is the 10 weight. I'm just going to put some in each of the little... And I'm slightly over-lubricating, he says. Well, massively over-lubricating. But, you know, why not? And the goal here is just to have a little bit of lubrication in each one of those holes, uh, such that this guy will hold on to the individual bearings. Okay, so now what I want to do, you know, I'm going to go in ahead and, and because I, things should be under control, I'll, I'll do it this way instead. I'm just going to put this right here so you can see. And now one by one, we're going to reach in. We're going to drop these guys in. Actually, I'm going to use a different tool for this. With tweezers, you have the small risk of pinching the ball and then it kind of going off center and then like off to the side here. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to put a little bit of the, the lubrication that I just put on the detent ball. I may need a little bit more lubricity here. But basically, I'm going to use the end of this uh, spring bar tool here with a little bit of oil on it, hopefully to pick up the balls? Is the oil not tacky enough? Ah. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do instead. I'm gonna take a little bit of a higher weight oil. Come on now. Really? Is that what's gonna happen here? You can tell it's been a little while since I used the heavyweight stuff. Come on. My goal here is just to take a little tiny bit of this heavyweight oil, and that should let me lift. Okay, well, that's not working either. Cool. All right, so then what that means is that these bearings are a little too big for that approach. Um, can I try it with a slightly larger tool? Will that work? Or surface area? No, it's a sphere. The surface area should be the same. I'm an idiot. I need to do better at geometry. So, uh... Okay, well, that maybe isn't technically true with... Anyways, moving on. What I'm going to do instead, then, is exactly what I was doing. I'm going to go ahead and just drop things in one by one, and I'm going to try my best. Oh, sure, now you lift. Maybe this is magnetized. But I'm going to just try my best not to send any of these bearings flying. See? See? Did you just see what I did? Of course you did. You zoomed in on it on a camera. You saw that. That's exactly the thing I'm scared of. So I'm trying my best not to really bring the tips together in any meaningful way. Uh, as a result, it's like that freaking... You may not have a reference for this, but there, there's a class of rigged arcade games where you have a little crane that you dig, uh, dig in to, you know, a pit of toys with to try and win something 
but it has the grip strength of, you know, a uh, dehydrated toddler. I don't even know whether that affects, like, hydration affects toddler grip strength. I'm, I'm trying over here. I just don't know what has much lack of grip strength. Me trying to rock climb. Anyways, I digress. But I feel like one of them, right? Where it's just like, you know it's going to drop it. It's trying, but it's been programmed to be bad. All right, almost there. Hydrate your toddlers, people. I don't know anything about toddlers, but I assume they want water. All right, uh, let's go ahead and clean the heavy lube off of my hands. Yeah, that's charming. All right, uh, put that there. So now what we have is a set of bearings in a pivot. Next thing I'm going to do is put a little bit of lubrication onto the pivot here. And I'll go ahead and I'll slide that in place here. And then I'm going to put this whole shebang over there. Uh, am I being smart? Yeah, ish, sometimes. <laughs> All right, uh, zoom back out a little bit. Next thing I'm going to do is deal with this set of bearings over here. So uh, to start with, let me boozify that real quick and lift this whole thing over here. And let me boozify another cloth swatch. 21 minutes in. All right. Then we ain't even out of the danger zone yet. Okay. Well, we're definitely cleaning some off already, right? This isn't a bad approach to doing this, but it's also not a great approach. Um, so again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my spring bar tool here and start popping these guys through. Yeah, there was definitely some oil on there. All right. At least now we can advertise it is coming with 12 gallons of nano oil. By the way, I've been using that oil five weight here. Knife pivot lube would have worked fine too, but I like the dispenser for nano oil for this a little bit better, and that's the level at which the distinctions occur these days. It's like I prefer this dispenser. It's very hard in the world of high-end knife lubrication these days to really meaningfully tell a difference except between different viscosities. And perhaps aging, but at this point, yeah. Okay. If I'm going to throw something in my lap, it's good that it's a big piece. Let's throw that there. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is just kind of shift everything together. Whoa there. Should have used the smooth end. This is why I want to go to watchmaking school. Not because I ever think I'm going to be a watchmaker, but because I think there's probably a lot of tricks and tips I could learn about handling finicky objects like this. All right, I'm going to booze this up a little bit more here and then just get in here and do this. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right, I would dare say that these bearings are clean. So, now comes the fun part. This right here is a completed part of the knife. There is lubrication on the detent ball ramp. There is lubrication around the pivot. There is... Yeah, we're good there. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this in place. Beautiful. All right. That's, that's sitting pretty. Um, next thing I'm going to do is put this in position. Am I? Yes, I am. My question here is, am I better off putting the bearings into this here or here? And I think I'm better off here because at least I will never be fighting gravity. Uh, and I can align this bit as I need to later on. But before I go any further, I am going to go on ahead and install this backspacer, which I've just noticed, because it feels like that's the best choice for me right there. Uh... I would rather deal with that now. Well, I don't have as many things, other variables in place. Okay. 
Next step is going to be to start with the lubrication of love in here. Oop, uh, let's get these out of the way. And I'll go ahead and I'll zoom back in for you again and get everything on camera. All right. When I'm doing this, I want to not drop the bearings into the pivot. <laughs> I, I can't guarantee that I won't, but I want to not. Let's go ahead and... My goal for this, again, is almost less because it needs this much lubrication to spin. In fact, you could make an argument it would be fine dry, but instead because this much lubrication will help them stay. And at this point, staying is almost as important as spinning for me. Okay, let's drop this in. That time I got a freebie. Get in there. Get in there. Thank you. I feel like my tweezers have become magnetized. And I don't feel like that's actually a problem right now. In some ways, it's easier to deal with magnetic metal ball bearings rather than ceramics, which never magnetize. Up, uh, in some ways, though, it's much worse. Because you get extra forces. Uh, okay, I'm going to need a second tool in here. Oh, come off it. And we have now entered the Festival of Balls section of the disassembly. Okay, you know what? I am done with this. I'm moving to Siberia to raise muskrats. Or maybe a better approach would be to use a non-magnetic tool. So I will allow myself to use these tweezers, which appear to be magnetized, but I'm going to use a non-magnetic bamboo stick. If I were better with chopsticks, I could do it with both. There's also a chance that the bearings are magnetized. Okay. Either way, let's go ahead and rotate you out of my way just to minimize the distance here. Uh, yeah. Come on. Okay, no, no festival of balls. There we go. Sounds related to a sausage fest, but somewhat different. All right, come on, get in there. There we go. This magnetization is unhelpful, but also kind of helping. I am so close that I can taste it. I see three balls and I see three holes and that's in this one specific context exactly what I want. So, yeah. There we go. Oh, that was a little touch and go for a moment there. Okay, good. All right, so all the balls are in place. And on the bottom, things are flush as well. That's beautiful. Okay, now what I got to do, I have one last job, and that is to get this here on this here, and then as quickly as I humanly can, put a pivot in there and get it turned. So my goal here is not to push or force. It's just to let this basically fall into the position it wants to be in. And I think we're there. Okay. I am not putting Loctite on this screw. There is no Loctite on this screw. If I put Loctite on this screw, there's a chance this knife is never coming back apart because, of course, why would you prevent a major problem in a $1,100 knife? It doesn't make any sense. Why would you? Okay, go ahead and clean out this screw hole right here because, dude, ew. And go ahead and clean that up. Okay. You know what? It's 29 minutes into a simple knife disassembly. 
At some level, that's intensely disappointing, but at another level, I'm actually feeling pretty good about my life. <laughs> Let's make sure I'm using a penny here for the same non scratchatory reasons. All right. Now what I'm doing is I'm checking to see. Yeah, that looks good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and continue. That's tightened. All right. Now what I'm going to do is... Mm, I need to seat this pin. This pin is not currently seated. That's not good. So I'm going to loosen the pivot very slightly. And now, just try and manipulate these scales relative to... There we go. Now that pin is seated. Now I can drop this into place. And now I'm going to put this here. No Loctite, zero Loctite, and use my flathead driver. Because, of course, you wouldn't use Torx. Because why would you? No, you'd never sell proprietary screwdrivers that way, would you? All right, I'm going to take this out of its bit holder here and just use the bit itself. Okay, really? It's like with a freaking dog. Come on, give it up. <laughs> there we go. Gee. Okay, now I'm just going to use this and finger tighten and finger tighten. There we go. Okay, so now the question is where we at. These look good to go. I'm not seeing any issues in here, right? Everything seems to be seated. The pivot is a little loose, but that's because I loosened it. This looks okay. Centering is pretty much dead on, so that's good. No blade play. I think I have the pivot a little too tight, so I'm going to loosen it up just a touch. No play. It feels like there's a fiber in there. Uh, like there's a little tiny, like probably not even one of these guys, but like, you know, a little bit of fuzz off of it. And the nice thing about that is that, oh yeah, it's it's breaking apart already. Um, yeah, that's nice. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen. Because, okay, is my pivot where I want it to be? There is zero blade play. Action is good. Yeah. So I'm going to loosen this screw just a smidge. And then tighten it to the extent that I'm willing to. Holy crap, we did it! We're done! All right, that is a working Shirogorov knife. I want you to notice just how much more effort that was than a knife with captive bearings is. It's not to say that you should never do free spinning bearings, but that is to say that when you do, you... Well, it's very clear that you hate us, um, and that's fine. You're welcome to express your hatred however you'd like. Actually, that's not true. Don't be hateful. That's ugly, and it makes you a dick. But more importantly, uh, it, it is, uh, it's all good. It's running. Um, in terms of my overall feelings on the knife, it, look, it's a heck of a knife. Um, I don't care for the fact that this spot here is exposed in the back. That's a thing that Shirogorov does all the time, and every time it's scary, and it's like, what are you doing? The fact that this is free spinning, absolutely not. Same thing back here, not at this price. Um, it, it is a very, very nice action. It is a very, very nice edge, like they've Got this down to an incredibly thin edge, which is one of the things I appreciate very most about uh, Shirogorov's work. Generally speaking, they, they make knives that really cut exceptionally well. Um, but yeah, overall, I mean, it, frankly, more fun to disassemble than anything. But I, yeah, it's a, it's a very, very nice knife. Um, but there, there are a number of places where this can be improved. And I think I'm just going to go on ahead and leave it at that. And uh, now there's a disassembly video for it. And uh, even though my main... Uh, suggestion is no don't uh, don't disassemble this knife now you've seen it done now this knife's in much better shape and you had some content hopefully you found it interesting to you and have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day bye now hopefully this was a quantum leap in disassembly technology no okay bye now